You're listening to the B2B Growth Think Tank, the show that brings you the virtual hot seat where each week my expert guests and I help another business leader by masterminding actionable solutions to a specific challenge they're currently trying to solve in their business. So if you're looking for answers to a specific challenge that you're facing, that if you could solve in the next 90 days would have a huge impact on your growth, send it in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk and we'll see if we can feature you on the show. My name is Adam King, your host and the captain of the ship of growth consultancy Think Like a Fish. And if you're ready to rethink what's possible for your business and discover the growth strategies, advice and insight to turn this new vision into a reality, let's get started. Today, I'm going to show you a simple way to make a list of your perfect strategic partners and basically give you a few real life examples at the end to help you visualize doing this for yourself. So first off, what you're going to want to do is define the types of partners that you would like to have in your strategic alliance crew, right? Now, you're going to want to create an initial list of around 20 to 30 non-competing business types because these are your potential partners and you know referral sources if you want to call them something else, right? Now, what you want to do is think about the types of non-competing businesses that sell or provide services or products to your ideal tar- ideal clients, right? And that is either before they need your service, instead of your service, or after they've used your service. Now, what do they do? That's what you want to ask yourself. What kind of services do they offer? What kind of markets do they operate in? That kind of thing. Because I know that it's it's sort of you know easy to say complementary businesses and what is you know blah blah blah. So I want to give you a few examples of what this looks like so that maybe it will sort of spark some ideas in your head so that you'll be able to sort of go out and make this list for yourself. Okay. So let's say you're a mortgage broker specializing in first time mortgages. Now it might not necessarily make sense to pair up with another mortgage broker, but it does make a lot of sense to look for successful estate agents who might be willing to partner with you and share clients. Now, any first time buyer that inquires or they help to have an offer accepted, they're going to need help with mortgages. Now, this is quite a common one, right? It happens a lot of the time. You go and find a house and they say, have you got your finances in order? You say yes or no. And if you say no, you say, well, would you like us to introduce you to our um, you know, our mortgage specialist? And it tends to be a partner and a, and a separate company. Now, Another, you know, but um, what happens in this one is that let's say that you're a, you know, that mortgage broker who specializes in first time buyers. Now, that means that you're not going to be a competitor to another broker like broker who specializes in, say, mortgages for self employed contractors. So you could partner with these, even though you may have at the first glance, at first glance, considered yourself in competition with each other. So this is another thing to bear in mind, like you, some of these non-competing businesses may on the surface look like competition, but actually they're not. So it's another way of thinking about things in a, in a slightly different way. Now, what about another example? Well, if you're a financial advisor, you could look to partner with an accountant or a divorce solicitor. Now, each of these, they're in prime position to know when their clients would need an advisor. And you're in an ideal position to know when your clients may need their services. So again, it works vice versa, the same uh, the other way around. And another one, let's say you sell to small businesses. You can develop partnerships with other businesses that work with small business owners. Now think uh, banks, accountants, insurance brokers, solicitors, printers, graphic designers, web designers, software companies, IT consultants, leadership trainers, HR trainers, sales trainers, Hopefully you're starting to get the the, the size of the opportunity with this, right? So, you know, I mean, one of the, like my final example would be, um, it's an example that's really close to home for me. And when I say really close to home, I mean literally next door because um, I live next door to a pub and the pub doesn't serve food. And there is a... um, a couple up the road who own a catering company. Now, what they do is on various nights of the week, regularly on a Tuesday, but um, you know, every you know during the summer there's other things as well. On a Tuesday, they do a curry night where they come in and they sell their um, curries out of the pub. 
they do a catering service so they aren't you know they don't have premises and people walking in and out so they are able to go where there is a demand or a trade put their wares in front of people when people come in and buy it now they do the same in, in the summer with um, pizza nights and they do a pie and mash night and stuff on a thursday but that is on a very small scale an example of a strategic alliance right it works very well. The pub takes a cut of each um, each thing that is, each uh, meal that is served and bought, and they obviously get to the, the, the catering company. They get to um, sell their wares and um, you know generate. They generate a lot of business for other events and stuff like that on the back of being known in the area for doing the meals out of the pub. But there we go. So I hope that. You found that useful. The next one's going to be quite an interesting one because I'm going to be showing you why, as beneficial as all this strategic alliance strategy can be, I'm going to tell you why most strategic alliances are doomed from the start and what you can do instead. So make sure you catch that one. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you got some great ideas that you can take away and apply to your business to help you grow. If you did, please share it with somebody else that might also find this valuable because they will thank you for it. Also, to let you know that I have a podcast gift page where I put a lot of resources that I love to share with my listeners. You can find the links to join the Facebook community there and you can get my book, The Conversational Relationship Marketing and the audiobook version all for free, plus a number of other resources I'll be adding over time on that page. So make sure you head there to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift and you can help yourself to the things that make most sense to you. And if you have enjoyed the show, please make sure you're subscribed. You'll get updated as the new episodes come out. And finally, last favor, please consider giving the show your honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one. They mean the world for me. I love hearing from my listeners and it does help others find the show as well. So if you want to go and do that, I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, have an awesome day and we'll speak soon.